all right y'all want the good news or the bad news first because you know that we can't have anything in legends where it's just good news and honestly depending who you are possibly just two pieces of bad news for you good news gogeta looks absolutely cracked i predicted a new power level of character considering how good the banners were i figured nothing else would draw people away to summon in I believe he is that power level. Bad news is the banners are honestly some hot fucking garbage. Privet Rusia, it's Anatoly, the Soviet Super Saiyan. Let's get at it. So usually before banners and stuff drop, I like to do a kit review on the characters and a banner review, and I usually save the banner review for the end, but this time around, I'm gonna do it first. It's because there's really not that much to talk about and not much about it is all that good. If you don't care about the banner review, I'll put timestamps in the description so you can just skip over to the character kit discussion. Like, first of all, there's actually going to be, as far as I can tell, a daily on the banner where, you know, 20 CC, try your luck each day. I mean, the math on the daily summons is just, there's literally no other summons in the game that provide as good a value. So I recommend everyone be doing all their dailies on it, obviously. Now, as far as the actual characters on the banners, fucking yikes. So you got Gogeta and I'll give him this. He's at a 0.35% drop rate, which is better than new LFs usually are now. Don't get me wrong, that's not, I still understand basic statistics. That's not good in any way, but I'll take better. And the other kind of nice thing is, is he does drop at a 2000 Z power. So that's even a little better than the triple Z power rates were. You only need five copies of him to get him maxed out. I have a feel we're gonna be seeing a lot of red stars on Gogeta's, honestly, almost immediately. But hey, for anyone who does manage to pull him, that's super nice because you don't have to deal with that like, two-star flimsy defense L uh, way that LFs usually are, he's just gonna be viable right off the jump. And But filling out the banner, you got a uh, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta here, obviously amazing. Half Corrupted Fusion Zamasu, not bad. UI, not aged the best. I mean, he's not terrible, and funny enough, I still really wanna pull a copy of him because I don't have a single one but I'm not gonna pretend like he's super great or nothing. Kojita, his stock has rose up like GameStop last year. I mean, it's a good time to be a yellow. Hey, I mean, all dimps, you wanna throw us a Zenkai for a yellow hit? You'd have my heart forever. But after that, I, I don't even wanna look through that. I mean, I just see that 0.025% three drop rate and I'm like, it literally has to be every other sparking in the game. And if I'm, if I'm wrong, let me know, but at some point when you start off with those kind of raids, it doesn't matter if it's all the sparkings or 90% of the sparkings, just kind of not great in general. You know what else is not really that great? The friggin' step up structure. It's literally just step one, 1000 CC. Step two, 1000 CC. Step three, 1000 CC. A free on step four, which it's not the worst format we've ever seen. You do get the, uh, I can't remember what those tickets are called, but I mean, let's be honest, the shot for them isn't super great. One other kind of nice thing about this banner is you do get a guaranteed sparking every single multi, which on one hand, it's like, okay, I'm not gonna get all, oops, all heroes, or, you know, just some EXs, but it's like, if you're putting all the sparkings in the entire game on the banner, there's an awful lot of sparkings that most people just, especially after these triple rates banners, where even like moderate spenders like me are just like, I got like half my sparkings, if not more maxed out at this point. Ah, that's not like a huge, huge redemption on it, but it is what it is. So, Obviously, y'all, it pretty much comes down to how badly do you want the Gogeta? If your answer, like most people's I'm assuming is pretty fucking badly, yeah, you're gonna spend on this banner, be a little salty, but it's not the worst one ever. But with that out the way, let's actually go over this man's kit. This is, he's ushering in a whole new era. Like anyone who doesn't think so, just, I feel like they're just underestimating this kit and they won't within a couple hours here. Usually I wouldn't do this for, well, not LFs, he's technically an ultra, but like we're splitting fucking hairs here at this point. I'd, you know, put their stats up and stuff at like six star or something. No, we're going straight to 14 star. 2000 Z power per pool. Yeah, people are gonna have a maxed out day one. Honestly, it's it's pretty goddamn strong. Uh, health, I mean, two and a half million. That's just kind of average. Strike attack, pretty solid. Blast attack, man, not terrible but y'all see later why they might you know put these a little low so when it starts ramping up it doesn't just literally like absolutely black hole the meta around itself which it still might 
both the defenses are pretty nice. I mean, look at this spread. It's just the, not Octagon, God damn it. American education system's failing me. This, this hexagon here is to just touch it almost every quarter. Like, yeah, he's he's a he's a beast in all of them. His main ability, Vanquish All Evil, randomly destroys one of your cards to draw his main, so it's always available to use. Restores health by 30 and key by 30, and raises damage inflicted by 20% for 15 counts, so pretty nice. His ultra ability, Resonance of Force Fusion Warrior. If this character is the leader, applies the following effects to self when battle starts. 30% to damage inflicted and to key recovery can't be canceled, just has it, just has it. If this character is not the leader, applies the following effects to self per tag Fusion Warrior Battle slash support member when battle starts. 5% to damage inflicted cannot be canceled and 5% to key recovery cannot be canceled. So either way, he's gonna at least 15% to both those stats, probably 30 if you're running him as your leader. Oh man, any buffs that are uncancelable are always just so dirty. And you're starting to see why, you know, maybe the base stats weren't Zenkai level because, <laughs> you know, the buffs get them there. As far as uniques go, his first one, Supreme Otherworld Shattering Power, applies the following effects to self when battle starts. 100% to damage inflicted, cannot be canceled, reduces damage received by 50%, can't be canceled, and increases arts card draw speed by one level, can't be canceled. Oh my god, I mean, just already, like, so he come in, like, easily could come into the battle with 30%, 130% to damage inflicted, can't be canceled, and damage received, halved, can't be canceled. <laughs> When he's on the battlefield, he charges his unique gauge every time he uses an arch card, and once it's full, it resets to zero and applies the following effects to self. He draws a special move arch card, restores health by 15 and key by 40, and adds another 20% to damage inflicted for 15 counts, and, uh, which can't be canceled, and reduces next damage sustained by 20%, which can't be stacked and only applies until the next enemy combo is finished, but at this point, we're talking 150%. Damage inflicted, guaranteed. 70% damage reduction cannot be removed. Oh my God. Like this man is just literally gonna do absolutely everything besides support, which he even kind of does since he has a cover cut. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. His next unique ability, Ultimate Avenger, when two allies are defeated, randomly destroys one of his art cards and he gets a second ultimate. Just, ow, why not? Just the first character to ever do this, and oh man, that is, <laughs> that is good. He's just gonna be like, this man ha probably has one shot potential twice in a match because of this. On top of that, the following effects occur when this character enters the battlefield if there's a defeated battle member. Nullifies own unfavorable element factors for 10 timer counts, activates twice, inflicts all enemies with no switching for five timer counts, activates twice, Boys, remember in my fucking prediction video when I was saying I bet he's gonna have a way to just like, uh, you know, nothing can be type effective against me? Bam, he got that. He is really the counter to Mono Purple because if someone's dead, he's about to come out and be like, oh, Vegeta, you're out there? You think you're gonna deal with, the, uh, with us yellows? Nah, bam, get out of here. He also shortens ally substitution counts by five when the enemy activates a rising rush while the character is on the battlefield. So he, so this is like a reverse to the way some characters are. Some are like, hey, let me cover cut in sooner. He's like, oh, you're trying to rising rush me? Nah, man, people are trying to showcase me right now. I'm gonna duck out and throw whoever's on the bench to die. And as if all that wasn't enough, he has a 20% damage inflicted against powerful opponent or sagas from the movies. Also can't be canceled because this man is just like, you're, you're not touching my buffs. Get out of my personal space. Keep, I'm keeping my buffs. And he has a cover cut against strikes which he can combo with his special move arts. His strike has blast armor and restores his own key by five every time you use it. So more or less, his strikes only cost you 14 key. They gave him a regular blast because he can't have literally everything in the world. His special move deals massive impact damage and gives him plus 20% to special move damage inflicted for 10 timer counts upon activation, destroys your enemy's entire hand, also has blast armor, his green, restores own key by 30, adds 20% to strike damage inflicted for 15 timer counts, applies buff effect, nullifies enemies special actions that can activate when changing cover to self for 10, for 10 timer counts, cancels his own attribute downgrades and normal conditions, and cancels the enemy's attribute upgrades, but only does it twice. It's, they balanced it by only letting him do it twice. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck am I reading? 
Uh, and his ultimate, remember the one that we're giving him twice? Deals supreme impact damage and applies the following effects to self upon activation. Plus 30% to ultimate damage inflicted for three timer counts and nullifies enemies, restore health when it reaches zero effects for 30 timer counts. And they also gave it blast armor. Oh. <laughs> Look, I knew this shit was gonna be busted when they were talking, they showed us what they did in the video and stuff this morning, but oh my God. Oh my fucking God. This is, this is too much. Oh, and they also gave him a, a strike card for the deck. <laughs> Where's he get where whoever uses it gets 20% of their strike damage inflicted for two timer accounts So this man if he pops one of these could legitimately just by himself Get to 210% damage inflicted up. Oh, oh, oh My god, I didn't like I, I knew it was gnarly before I started this video. But I didn't really do the math yet. Oh uh, and let's look at his uh, tournament of power abilities. Start a battle, same things here, just 100% of damage inflicted can't be canceled. 30% of damage, minus 30% of damage received can't be canceled. Plus 80% to uh, key recovery can't be canceled. Heals himself by 2% on each strike or blast arts used or that hits him. Uh, also gets plus 10% to his special move gauge and 10 to key recovery. Can cover cut for his allies has the same damage buff against powerful opponent and sagas from the movies, cancels his own attribute uh, downgrades, and cancels the enemy's upgrades and buffs, and he gives his allies uh, plus 5% to special move damage inflicted, gets the same, um, gets plus 5% to damage inflicted and plus 5 to key recovery per ally fusion warrior, and every time an ally is defeated, he upgrades his special move arts, and gets plus 20% to his special move gauge. This is number one character everywhere. Nothing competes. There's no character that has a viable argument against this man. Done. Fucking, like, I'm, I don't want to hear it. I've only, literally just, there's nothing in the game that's like this. Oh God, I'm gonna summon hard, aren't I? Oh boy. <laughs> oh, this is, this is wonky. This is wonky. So his Z ability initially is 28% to fusion warrior strike attack or defense. You pull your second copy, you're gonna be up to 30% to fusion warrior or Saiyan strike attack and defense. You get it up to the third level, you get 38% to fusion warrior or Saiyan strike attack and defense and 3% to tag super Saiyan special move damage. And then if you get them cracked out to 14 stars, you get 5% to tag super Saiyan special move damage and 42% to tag Fusion Warrior or tag Saiyan Strike Attack and Defense. Like this is the first non-single color or Zenkai buff as far as I can tell that's gone above 40%. RIP to anybody who doesn't have this man after tonight. This is wow. Wow, like that's it. That's the video. If you guys are a little mind blown like me, throw a like on this video. Other people would need to see what an almost shit post of a character this guy is. Also, if you've made it this far and you're not subscribed yet, I gotta ask you why. You obviously enjoyed what you're watching. Watching a uh, Soviet man lose his mind over the most degenerate shit he's ever seen. So go down there, hit the subscribe button, slide on over, ring the bell so you don't miss any of my uh, notifications and become a Soviet Saiyan yourself. We have a great time here every day. We just passed 400 Soviets, working our way to 500, and we can't do it without you. But you know, like I always make sure to say, I just love making these videos. I love it anytime y'all turn out to check them out. And until the next time I got one for y'all, which is gonna be some degenerate summoning tonight at Reset, peace.